Westminster for another episode of Saving Time. This week we're doing things a little different. I mean, grocery shopping these days is not fun, right? Prices are high and you're looking and then that whole smaller sizes, more money, all that kind of thing. It's getting on my nerves to be perfectly frank with you. I don't like it at all. Any way we can save money is a good way to save money. And cereal, A, why is there like a football field of cereal in the stores? We don't need that many kinds. And B, it's really expensive all of a sudden. If you don't get it on, it's like $7 a box. Brought me around to what we're going to do this week. For years I've been making granola at home. I like it, my husband likes it. It's a healthy choice. It lets you control what you're putting in. And these days with the price of cereal, it's a very economic way. You're going to get nice cereal, good quality cereal, and you're gonna do it for at least half the price, if not better than that, than what you're paying for these boxes of cereal. And you know what you're putting in, and you're custom designing it to make it suit your family's taste. Trust me on this one. It's, it's really good. Easy peasy, and honestly, it comes together in a heartbeat. You're gonna love this. I make it probably once a week at home to keep us in enough, and, but we're big eaters, so you know, might last longer in your house. Start with my favorite thing, one ripe banana, right? Everybody's got one, you've got one. And if you don't have them, this one was in the freezer here because when they get extra ripe and I don't have a spot for them, I just wrap them up and pop them in the freezer and then they're ideal for this or muffins or cake or you know, wherever you might want to put the pancakes, we did that. So just once they've been frozen, they're like goop, right? <laughs> That's an official phrase right there, they're like goop. Mash it up so that it's smooth, and then grab some orange juice. Um, for years, I added oil. I kind of thought you had to, right? Like I looked at recipes, this, that, and the other thing for making granola, everybody's adding oil. I started with my mashed banana and orange juice. I've never gone back. You don't need oil. Don't fall for that. You don't need it. Keep it simple, keep it healthy. All bananas are not created equally, so mash your banana in the bottom of a measuring cup and then top up with your orange juice to one and a half cups, 12 ounces. Some bananas are bigger than others, some are just going to mash up further. You want to get 12 ounces and that's it. That's the liquid right there. These little bottles of orange juice, and they had other flavors too, I only bought orange, uh, were $1.20 or something like that at uh, Zares this week. And I, how can you go wrong? This is a nice healthy drink. And then you've got a reusable container too, a little drink bottle. Pick them up. They had lemonade, I know. I, I only got that for here. So just like that, and then mix it in. You don't need to get too worried about making it smooth. It's all gonna get blended together. This is granola, okay? You're, you're working with what you've got. You're not going to get yourself upset about things. Large flake oats, you have to get large flake. If you use quick or heaven forbid minute oats, they're too small and they're just gonna disappear. You want your granola to look like something. So you need to get the large flake. This bag of uh, no name brand is always $2 at no frills. So $2 for that, you've got tons here. And of course you can make porridge if you want to. <laughs> Start with six cups. Two, three. I love this. If I stop counting, I'm going to forget where I am. It's inevitable, and then we'll have to dump it back. That's four. I'm sorry. Boring to listen to me count, but trust me, uh, more than once. I've got, is that five or six? I don't know. There. There's enough in a bag for like one and a half turns. So if that helps you in terms of deciding if you think my guesstimation of price is accurate. So you're gonna go at least one and a half turns out of that bag. It used to be a little bit less, but it is seems to be holding at $2 right now. So plus, this is a reusable bag because it's got that zipper on it. So then you can use it for something else. Adding cereal. Corn flakes or bran flakes? I switch in between them. Corn flakes is handy because you can use it in other things, right? I, I think we did, did we do cornflake chicken or something, Shannon, one time? We did. So if you've got the cornflakes, then they're handy. Whereas if you've got bran flakes, well, I guess you could make muffins, but buy whichever one you can find and what's on sale. 
This box was only $3 this week at Freshco. But you can always buy the store brand ones reasonable as well. The larger size box, the family size box, is on sale for $4.99, also at Freshco. I only needed enough for this. We're going to do five, five cups of cereal. And again, brand flakes or corn flakes. Don't get anything with anything else in it, okay? Like just, just that. Don't get raisins or that. Don't maybe added stuff, okay? Four. Whoops. And five. Yeah, don't fall for that, okay? Because they add things and then eat. So there. Three bucks, two bucks. Like honestly, you can't go wrong with this. I always put a cup of coconut in. If you're not a fan of coconut, skip the coconut. Okay. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to do it this way. I often have hemp hearts or all bran. You know the kind of bran that looks like rabbit food? It's the little pellets. I have that too. Sometimes I'll put in hemp hearts or that, or you could switch it and put nuts of any variety in there, not salt it. So again, one cup. I had coconut here and I was happy to use it up. That goes in. Easy peasy. Look at how easy this is. And honestly, if you're not a fan of coconut, switch it, okay? Raisins come later after cooking. Uh, if you put them in now, they're just going to get rock hard in the baking. Not pleasurable when you're eating your cereal. One cup of brown sugar. Everybody thinks that sounds like a lot. I mean, if, if you really don't like the idea, I think a cup between all of these other ingredients is okay. Um, if you're not loving that, use less. Okay. If you don't need to go a cup, I always do. And, and I always use brown. So if you're going to go sugar, I wouldn't put white sugar in. I think it's just going to get crystallized and it's not going to give you the same. This has that nice caramel flavor to it. So why I offer it? Look how easy this is. Honestly, we're, we're practically done. That was kind of nice. I'm sorry. This nice weather is such a tree. Oh my gosh, right? Is everybody trying to get outside? Gardens growing. We've got rhubarb like crazy. I've got to deal with it this weekend. It needs to be cut. Cinnamon. Just give a good shake through. I don't know, maybe one, two tablespoons if you're measuring. And then, I always use a wooden spoon. Um, mostly because then I'm going to use it in my pans and a wooden spoon won't scratch up your pans. You give it, you're just mixing it through and you know what, don't be shy, get your hands in there too. Brown sugar can get clumpy, so make sure that you break them up if there's bits in there that seem big. You're just blending, okay? We're not doing anything, we're just kind of making sure that our pans aren't going to have a whole pile of oats in one corner. We want them to be shared through especially the sugar and the cinnamon. There, that's, that's it. Then we've got this. Ha, ah, Shannon didn't remind me, but preheat your oven to 325. Sorry. Sorry, it's my worst thing to do. I should stop doing it here off camera and then I would remember to say it because I'd have to do it still. There we go. Just dump it in. Try not to waste any. And then just, you're just pushing it around. You're kind of holding. If you get too wild, you're going to have it all coming out of the bowl on you. And just keep moving it around until it's equally distributed through. You'll be able to tell it starts to get sticky. Make sure you don't have any puddles down at the bottom. The liquid will sink. So just keep pushing it around. Main thing I didn't say, because my banana was so soft that it was easy. Make sure that you really mash your banana. Don't have bits in there, because they're not going to go anywhere, OK? Make sure that you mash it well. Take the extra minute and keep going. That's it. Now we're going to divide it around. Now, at home, I have, oh my gosh, like I. I mean, I should be embarrassed about them, really. I have three 9 by 13 pans that have been dedicated to being used for granola for a long time. It's the only time I get them out. They're ugly as sin. <laughs> They're very messy looking. Um, but I keep them just for granola. 
A dark pan is best. We want it to toast. So we've talked about using glass pans when you don't want it to get brown. This time we want it brown. If you've got enough dark pans, use them. I don't know. These aren't. We'll just see how it gets spread around. The big thing here is you don't want it too deep in the pan. And you, you want to be able to shift them around in the oven. So And don't use baking sheets, though. It's too hard. You've got to stir it around. If you have baking sheets, it's going to be falling off and everything. You don't need to have some. Share it through. This one's bigger than a 9 by 13, I think. You want to cover the bottom, but not deep, deep. We'll see how we're doing here. Yeah, I will need all three. I wasn't sure if I was going to or not because of that big one, but I don't want to overfill it. So make it so that they all look relatively the same in terms of depth, because then you're going to get an even cook. And then you're going to have to get your hand in there, okay, because it sticks to the sides. No big deal. This is just nice stuff. This is so good, and honestly, in the world of dried fruit, you can use, uh, I always have raisins on hand, but if you think you wanna use dried apricots, dried cranberries, blueberries, whatever you've got on hand first and foremost, and otherwise when you go shopping, pick out what you know your family's going to like. This towel is wet, so I'm gonna use it to wipe my hand off. Um, get what you know your family will like. Raisins are typically the cheapest of dried fruits. Um, the world of blueberries and cherries are prohibitively expensive, I think, but you'll, you'll decide for yourself there. And then, and again, you know what, if your family's not into raisins or anything, just skip it, don't bother with them. You could do dried apples and such. You don't want anything too bulky. If you do apricots, I usually chop them a bit. Let me open the oven. That was easy. <laughs> I was ready for it and want to be. So we're going to get all of these in here. This is a nice convection oven, so I don't need to worry because the fan is going to make sure I get equal heat throughout. My normal little oven at home, two shelves. I do two on the bottom, one on the top, and then I keep rotating them around so that they get evenly cooked. This is going to look after it. I don't need to worry. 15 minutes, give them a stir. 15 minutes again, give them a stir. 45 minutes total. I'll come back and do a stir with you at least once. I just went through the first 15, so I'm just going to reach in here. And all you're doing, it feels like it's sticking, don't panic, okay? Just push it around. It always feels like it's sticking. The drier it gets, the less it sticks. And just reach around, don't knock yourself. See why you want sides, why you don't want to use the sheet pan? Honestly, what a nightmare. You'd have it going everywhere. So just push it around. You're not trying to turn it or anything. You're just stopping it from sticking. Honestly, that's all I'm really doing. And I'm gonna switch this one. And this big mitt makes me feel like I've got a ball glove on, to be honest. <laughs> I'm about that handy with it on. And there, so honestly, just you're just making sure it's not sticking. That's all you're doing. Reach into the corners, all across the bottom. Back in it goes. And another 15 minutes. I'll see you then. We'll stir it again, and then 15 more. So this is all out of the oven, and you can see absolutely beautiful. I've had it sitting here for a minute and I can handle it, so it's not too bad. Once you've got it moving around and see how it's not stuck, remember I kept telling you it only sticks while it's still wet? So it's not, look, no big deal. It's not gonna be that hard to wash that up. So a few little spots, this is not bad. This is my biggest thing when I started making granola. I thought, I don't wanna scrub pans. We all know about how much I hate washing this. Blend it all together back in that same bowl. We won't worry too much about the little bits. Everything in. And then one cup of whatever you're using. What I've got, um, these are sultana raisins, so they're light. Anything goes, one cup of it in there. Mix it through. Look what you've made. Look how nice this is. And hear how nice and crispy it is. So good. So good. Look at that. It's pretty. 
It's delicious. We know exactly what we put in there, so we're not getting weird ingredients that we don't even know what they are, and we certainly can't pronounce. This is a pet peeve of mine is when I look at the ingredient list and I think, I don't even know what that is. Like, is it a liquid? Is it a dry thing? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Lab experiments. Uh, <laughs> that's what they are. So, Shannon just had a little incident with the, with the camera. So you never can tell if it got weird there. It's her. It's on her this time. <laughs> this time it's not me. <laughs> Everything looks great. Let's make a beautiful breakfast. I got a glass bowl because I want, want you to see how pretty it looks. And then we need all of these parts. We're going to be top drawer here. So a few weeks ago, we made scones and we did uh, rhubarb preserves with them. If you remember, if you look back through the titles, you'll find it. And that is exactly what I have in this dish. The, this I did, I mixed the rhubarb with some frozen strawberries. Exact same process. And I know when we talked about it, I said, switch out your fruits however you want. I always keep some made up in my fridge at home because I like it I like this. I like to put a little bit in the bottom and then I like Greek yogurt, whatever kind you want to use, whatever is your preference, get it out. So I always do that little scoop of fruit in the bottom. And honestly, it's whatever. You can start with frozen fruit. You can start with whatever fruit you've got in the house that you think needs to be used up. Put your yogurt on top of that. Look at how nice this is, right? We'll go a little bit more. We need a good breakfast. We need a good breakfast to move forward. There you go. And then this spoon is not going to be good for putting some on there. So I'm just gonna do this. Get yourself a spoonful. Put it on top. Look how nice this looks. This is a million dollar breakfast at a restaurant, right? And then let's put some berries on top. And now, now you've got a beautiful homemade breakfast. You cooked your fruit, you know what's in there. Okay, you start it with fruit, maybe you add some sugar. That's it. You've got your yogurt. Get a good quality one that you know is a clean product. You made the granola, you know exactly what's in there. You added some berries on top, it's beautiful. We made this for about, well we bought everything today for $6. I had a few odds and sods around. Let's say you're in eight bucks, but there's enough ingredients left over to make this probably another time or two. You're looking at about, it's, it's easily half the price of what you're paying for a good quality cereal in the grocery store. Please take this on. It's not a lot of work. You saw how easy it was. In the meantime, quit letting food eat up all your time and money, okay? Let's find ways to save your time and save your all-important money, too. While you eat well, okay? While you eat well. Take good care. I'll see you soon. In the meantime, please like the video if you enjoy these recipes. Share them with friends. Subscribe to the Westminster Orangeville channel. And hit the little bell so you know when a new video is ready. Take good care. See you soon.